The day after the administration of President Joe Biden accused the Kremlin of preparing a conspiracy that includes fabricating a video Ukrainian attack against Russia's interests to serve as a pretext for invading Ukraine, which Moscow denied through the words of its foreign minister, the Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping agreed during a meeting between them before launching a session the Winter Olympics in Beijing rejected the expansion of North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO, to the east, and accused the West and the United States of destabilizing large areas of the world. During his first personal meeting with a foreign leader since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic two years ago, the Chinese president provided valuable support to his Russian counterpart, who is facing mounting pressure from the West to mobilize more than 100,000 of his forces on the northern, eastern, and southern borders of Ukraine, which he raised fears among NATO countries that this would be a prelude to starting an invasion. In this extraordinary and elaborate display of solidarity between the two countries on the sidelines of the Olympic Games, whose official opening was boycotted by many Western leaders, the two leaders issued a long joint statement that included an accusation by China of the United States of fueling protests in Hong Kong and encouraging independence in Taiwan, in addition to Russia's accusation of the United States the United States plays a similar role in destabilizing Ukraine. They stressed that Russia and China stand against the attempts of foreign powers to undermine security and stability in their common contiguous areas. They added that the two countries intend to confront the interference of external forces in the internal affairs of sovereign countries under any pretext oppose the color revolutions and increase cooperation between them in these areas. In a clear alignment of China with Russia in one of its main security demands, the statement stressed that the two sides oppose further NATO expansion and call on NATO to abandon its ideological approaches to the Cold War. In their statement, Putin and Xi noted that their two countries will work to establish closer ties in trade, diplomacy and security. They stressed that the friendship between the two countries has no boundaries. The two sides resolutely support each other in safeguarding their core interests, she said. Putin announced an agreement to supply more gas to China via a new pipeline. A new excuse to invade. On the other hand, the administration of President Joe Biden sought to strip Moscow of a new excuse to invade Ukraine, as U.S. officials revealed details of what they said was a plot to fabricate a detailed, camera-equipped attack on Russian interests and then published the video. They emphasized that this conspiracy reached an advanced stage in its preparation. The mock attack plan on Russian soil or Russian-speaking people was described in declassified intelligence shared with Ukrainian officials and European allies in recent days.
it was the latest example of the Biden administration's disclosure of intelligence as a tactic to try to stop Russian disinformation efforts and thwart what it says are President Putin's efforts to lay the groundwork for military action. And if Russia does invade, Administration officials say they want to make it clear that Russia has always sought a pretext. In recent weeks, the White House confirmed that U.S. intelligence revealed that Russia launched a malicious social media disinformation campaign against Ukraine and sent explosives trained operatives to carry out acts of sabotage against Russian forces. U.S. officials refused to provide details of the evidence on which they are based. State Department spokesman Ned Price said the administration needs to protect sensitive sources and intelligence gathering methods. We declassify information only when we are confident of that information, he said. According to Pentagon spokesman John Kirby, the plan includes the production of a propaganda video showing orchestrated explosions, using corpses, and actors depicting mourning mourners. We've seen these kinds of activities from the Russians in the past, he said. Intelligence indicates that the Russians will provide military equipment used by Ukraine, including a key weapon provided by Turkey, a NATO member, to bolster the credibility of the fake attack. It is possible that Russia will use Turkish-made Bayraktar drones as part of the fake operation. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmytro Kulba said, in a press briefing, that the United States informed his country that Russia might release a false propaganda video as a pretext for carrying out a military attack, but Ukraine is awaiting more details. Kolbo likened the current situation to 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea and backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. In principle, what was announced is not a surprise to us, since 2014, we have seen a lot of cunning actions on the part of the Russian Federation, the minister said. For her part, British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss described the U.S. statements as clear and shocking evidence of Russia's unjustified aggressiveness and Moscow's covert activities to destabilize Ukraine. The only way out for Moscow is de-escalation, withdrawal and commitment to finding a diplomatic path she wrote on Twitter. On Friday, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov denied U.S. allegations that Moscow fabricated a video recording as a pretext for launching a war in Ukraine, describing the matter as nonsense. Russia has massed more than 100 soldiers near its border with Ukraine, but denies planning an invasion, and has demanded Washington and NATO guarantees that Ukraine will not be allowed to join the military alliance. Strengthening Slovakia's Defenses In addition, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken held talks the day before yesterday, Thursday, in Washington with Slovakian Foreign Minister Ivan Korkuk and Slovak Defense Minister Yaroslav Nad. In a subsequent ceremony, 
the three diplomats signed documents aimed at strengthening the alliance between the two NATO countries as tensions escalated between Russia and Ukraine. The agreement allows the United States to expand its military presence in Slovakia, which has a border with Ukraine, by developing the Slyak and Kushina military airports. Slovaks are divided over the treaty, with critics saying it could lead to a loss of the country's sovereignty. This agreement makes it easier for our militaries to coordinate unusual defense efforts such as conducting joint exercises, Blinken said. There will be more regular consultations between our two countries regarding threats to our people and to international peace and security. After the signing, the Slovak parliament still has to give its approval, there is no guarantee that the approval will pass, as the three opposition parties in parliament, trade union representatives, and military critics have raised objections to the agreement. The Slovak Prosecutor's Office also recommended that parliamentarians reject the treaty, arguing that the association agreement undermines the Slovak constitution. Under the terms of the treaty, the United States will fund the redevelopment of the two military airports, which will remain owned by the Slovak government, but will be free to use by the U.S. military. Washington warns Beijing. Just hours before Putin and Xi met, the United States warned China not to help Russia evade potential sanctions related to the crisis in Ukraine. State Department spokesman Ned Price said Washington and its allies have a range of tools that can be deployed against foreign companies, including those in China that try to evade possible punitive measures against Russia. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen told German and French newspapers that the European Union had prepared a strong and comprehensive package of financial and economic sanctions if Russia invaded Ukraine. This ranges from restricting access to foreign capital to export controls, especially on technical goods, von der Leyen told German newspaper Handels Blatt and France's Les Echos, adding that the measures should make the Russian economy more vulnerable. The European official indicated that it was absolutely clear that the controversial Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline project between Germany and Russia could not be ruled out as a target of sanctions. In Helsinki, Finnish leaders held talks with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen about a message sent by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to several countries about the indivisibility of security in Europe. In Brussels, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg suggested increasing the number of Russian forces in Belarus to 30,000, with the support of special forces, advanced combat aircraft, Iskander short range ballistic missiles, and S 400 air defense missile systems. This is the largest deployment of Russia there since the Cold War, he said. He stressed that NATO has no intention of deploying forces in Ukraine in the event of Russia's invasion of it, but noted that the alliance has begun to strengthen the defenses of neighboring member states, especially Estonia, Latvia, 
Lithuania, and Poland. The 30-nation military alliance also plans to strengthen its defenses in the Black Sea region near Bulgaria and Romania. Macron meets with Putin and Zelensky. French President Emmanuel Macron will meet Russian leader Vladimir Putin in Moscow on Monday and the Ukrainian leader in Kiev on Tuesday to discuss the situation in Ukraine as Western leaders try to avoid a major conflict with Russia over Ukraine. Macron's office said he will meet with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kiev the day after his meeting with Putin in Moscow. French President Macron said finding a negotiating path to de-escalate tensions over Ukraine was a priority, even as the United States announced it was sending 3,000 more troops to Poland and Romania and as Russia built up its forces near Ukraine. Macron's office said in a statement that he had held two phone calls with the Russian and Ukrainian leaders, to try to make progress on the status of the breakaway region of Donbass in eastern Ukraine as part of efforts to defuse tensions. The statement also said that Macron assured the two leaders of the importance of discussing the conditions for reaching a strategic